Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world. Hey, everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new, welcome to my kitchen. I couldn't be happier to have you here. I would love for you, if you like this video, take some time and subscribe, hit that bell notification. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know that you're new here. We've had several new people join recently and I am super glad. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And I think this is the greatest community on YouTube as far as I'm concerned. And it's just because everyone is so wonderful and so nice. So let's just get started if you've been following me you know i have been the last two weeks i have paid tribute to a cook in that was inspirational to me at some point during my life whether it's childhood young motherhood or even today so um this one if you watched yesterday you know who i have picked for our final week of tribute like i said I, there was several i was choosing from on this third week and um, I landed here. There were so many I could have chosen because I love so many of the cooks that have been way back on PBS when I was a child till now. But this one, I have never cooked any of her food. I was always just really inspired by her elegant way of cooking, her elegant taste and table setting. But that was not necessarily the way I cooked. And I loved it from afar, but I never really tried it. And so yesterday I did a side dish of hers, which I did roasted pear. And it was actually supposed to be blue cheese. I used feta. And um, so the person I'm talking about is Ina Garten, the Barefoot Contessa. So now we're moving on to our entree. I'm getting super excited about the sweet ending, which will be on Thursday's video. But, um, we're going to do the entree tonight. So, I'm going to gather everything I need. I'm going to meet you probably over at the stove. Okay, so I'm over here. I've got some chicken thighs right here. And we're going to season them up in just a minute. But first, I want to take a little bit of butter and a little bit of bacon grease about a tablespoon of bacon grease. I believe her recipe called for olive oil, but we're gonna use some bacon grease. In my opinion, liquid gold. All right, and I'm gonna turn that burner on to a medium high. And I've taken my chicken thighs, they are bone in, skin on, and I have uh, patted them dry. And so I'm gonna season them really good all over. Where did my pepper go? I wanted a shaker. Okay, and I'm just gonna flip them over real fast. We'll pepper them. And we'll salt them again. Okay. All right, so this is getting hot. As soon as it gets hot, we're gonna put these in skin side down. And we're not gonna mess with them for about 15 minutes. We're gonna just let them kinda saute, basically. And, um, for about 15 minutes. If it starts to burn, we'll change the temperature on the stove, but um, we're gonna wait for this to get hot and then put them in. All right, let's put them in. And remember, we're going skin side down. Get 
wash my hands. We'll be back in about 15 minutes. For you, it'll be just a second. Can you hear it sizzling over there? I thought I'd talk to you just a minute. It is crazy here today. Uh, I'm actually in awe of it. Um, today, if you're not familiar with me, I am in North Carolina. And we are under a weather advisory, not because of storms or heat or anything like that, although it is very hot outside. But um, the wildfires in Canada, the smoke has made it all the way to little old North Carolina. Not only little old North Carolina, but little old Asheboro, North Carolina. And um, everything is hazy outside. I mean, you can visibly see the smoke. When I heard it on the news, I thought it was just going to be an air quality issue and that you really couldn't see anything. But it's actually, um, it amazes me. I seen it all that things like that, wildfires, that the smoke from wildfires can make it all the way here. So um, pray for the people in Canada. I don't know how many people it's affected or whatever, but um, yeah, pray for them because it must be big if it's making it all the way here. So, all right. Um, I'm just waiting on the chicken. I'll meet you when we turn it over because there's something else we're going to add at that point. Okay, everyone, it's time to flip it. Oh, my goodness. Look at that beautiful. Whoop. Be careful. That green plate just fit and splattered. I'm stepping away. I didn't want grease spots on my dress. I've already got spots on it. I just didn't want grease spots. Oh, y'all, look at that. Y'all, hang on. That's picture worthy. Frying along so loudly, I don't know if you can hear me or not. But I've got about two onions where I've sliced in half moon um, circles. So we're going to add these in here at this point. As soon as I flip them, we're adding these onions. All right, we'll go another 15 minutes and I'll stir the onions occasionally and then we're going to add all the goodness and flavor in here. I cannot wait. All right, let's check the temperature of the chicken thighs to see if they're done. They are absolutely gorgeous and I don't even like chicken thighs, but these are absolutely beautiful. I'm looking for 160 Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. So we are just going to let these, I'm going to pull the chicken thighs out and just set them on a plate, let them hang out, and just be beautiful for a little while. Uh, the onions need a little bit more. Some of them were on top of the others and didn't get. So I'm actually gonna let the onions cook just a little bit more before we make the delicious sauce that we're gonna let these chicken thighs swim in. So they're almost done. There's just a few here that didn't get down in the goodness. So I'm going to let these go for just another minute or two and we're going to make this delicious sauce and then we're going to snuggle those chicken thighs back in and then our supper is going to be ready. All right, so we're going to start with two tablespoons of the cooking wine. We're going to go in with a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. A 
maybe. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is going to be good. Now we're going to add a teaspoon of whole grain mustard. We're going to add some salt in here. And let's give this a little stir real quick. All right, and to this, we're going to add in a cup of sour cream. Now I'm going to eyeball this. I believe that's about half a cup. So let me scoop out some more of this other one. Hey guys. Look who it is. Checking in on her. What's he she, always knows when I'm cooking. What is she doing? I always knows when to show up. All right, I'm going to take a whisk. Now, of course, Ina's recipe did not call it sour cream. Um, but I looked up the equivalent, and it was sour cream. So... And you know what, guys? I'm going to add just a little bit more mustard. Just a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. It smells heavenly. All right. So I'm going to snuggle these chicken thighs down in here, and we're going to cook them for another few minutes and then we'll be ready to eat and try these out. Just going to kind of nestle them in there. Mm. And we're going to capture any juices that came out. All right, guys. We'll be back in just a little bit. Another fancy eating here at LMB Farms at the farm and pastor's wife. So uh, I'm excited to see how Bryant likes this dish. Okay, everyone, I'm going to call Bryant in here. I'm going to scoop him up one, and we're going to see what he thinks of this fancy dinner. He liked the fancy side dish yesterday, so let's see if he likes the fancy dinner today. All right, let's bring him in. I'm going to get another picture. He's ready to try it. He's yeah. actually already tried it. Here we go. I know a little bit of what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. So describe it to us. It's really good. Really creamy. Rich. A little twangy. That would be the mustard. Um, really good. The onions gives it a good texture, um, variance, whatever you want to call it. Variety or add mm -hmm. addition. Mm -hmm. Um. He did suggest that maybe next time I do it, to do it boneless. However, it, I cannot ever find skin on boneless. 
If you pine bone, this gets skin off usually. Yeah, so, and I think you kind of need the skin to give mm -hmm. it that. Yeah. So, if you know where I can find boneless but skin on, let me know. Definitely a keeper. Really good. Rich, creamy, great flavor. What is that, sour cream? What is that? Sour cream and mustard and a little bit of cooking wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, Justin Wilson, I guarantee. I guarantee. Do you know who, what cook I'm paying tribute to this week? I think I heard you say. Oh, you heard me say. Okay. I don't recall her, though. Anna Garten. The Barefoot Contessa. I know that there was a lot of people on your channel that was hoping you would do her. Really? Because I read the comments, too. He read the comments mm -hmm. before I have. And so a lot of people were, were thinking about that. Well, great minds think alike. There you go. So, okay. I know uh, Chef Jeffrey likes her, too, over at uh, Old School Soul Food, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know he liked her. I think he does, because okay. I, th I thought he mentioned her. Okay. So. All right. Well, thank you, guys. We're going to go sit down and have dinner. And um, stay tuned for Thursday's video, which is going to be the this dessert. It's not really a real big dessert, but it's the sweet ending of my tribute to Ina Garten. So, all right. We'll see you Thursday. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you on the next video. Remember, the grease is hot enough. You can fry anything. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys.